Hi friends, remember that last video when I built a full project management app with Power Apps Code Apps using Vibe Coding and my trusty GitHub Copilot? Weird and kind of adorable, but this time we're trying something different. Welcome to the world of generative pages in Power Apps. Instead of coding everything from scratch, I'll be collaborating with the Power Apps app agent and it doesn't have a cute avatar, so naturally I'm just going to merge the googly eyes of Clippy with the icon that's used in app agent. Think of it as Copilot's well-behaved cousin, GitHub Copilot was like, whoa, let's code all the things. But app agents more like, mm, page generated. Here you go, both approaches have their charm, but today the cat's in charge. Think of it this way, code apps give you total freedom. I can include any library, tweak every pixel, basically do all the things. It's an all you can eat buffet. Generative pages on the other hand are more like ordering from a set menu at a fancy restaurant. A bit more structured, but you get the full course meal in record time. App agents know all about our model driven apps as well. Using my existing Dataverse metadata, it understands the data structures, relationships, required fields, and so on. I trade a smidge of freedom for the speed and convenience, and honestly, I'm okay with that. But will it replace Canvas apps? To try and answer that, I'm going to show off generative pages by building that classic equipment checkout app. Oh yes, go on then. Yes, I'll show you building a classic arcade game in the end, but stay with me. All right, enough talk. Cue the timer and let's see if we're hitting that 10x productivity just like last time. Let's do this. Every epic build needs a good plan, right? So I started with the new plan designer in Power Apps. I basically described the equipment checkout scenario. I wonder where I got that prompt from. I step away for a second and plan designer does its thing. Ta-da, it suggests a solution with two apps, a model driven app for admin and management stuff, and then a Canvas app for a user-friendly checkout interface. And here's the ERD of all the tables it generated, equipment, equipment categories, even sample data. Normally, I'd go off and build the Canvas app now using PowerFX, make it look really pretty, but here's the model-driven app plan designer created. It's already set up with all the tables in the sitemap and added forms and views, and yes, the sample data's there. Well, actually, I provided some of the images myself, AI generated, of course, but the model-driven app is functional. I can see the equipment list, open records, assign records via subgrids, but let's be honest, it's robust, but not slick. We can do better and faster with generative pages. Time to unleash the app agent and spice things up in this app. It's raising its eyebrows already in that provocative clippy kind of way. Hold on to your keyboards. First up, the equipment admin page. This will be a custom page in our model driven app where admins can manage equipment without digging through those forms and subgrids. I click add page, describe what I want and voila. The generative page designer opens up with our friendly app agent ready for action. I've got a list of demands manage equipment records, upload high-res images, categorize items, add categories on the fly, display thumbnails, sort and filter the list, an essay of a prompt, you bet. But getting these things clear up front really does pay off. Next, I tell my agent which Dataverse tables to use. Just like that, I select equipment and category and I can use either the forward slash to type the table name in or I can just use the add data button. Currently, you can refer up to six tables, so we're good for now. With context in place, I click generate page. This is the moment of truth. The agent analyzes the requirements, sets the assumptions and starts building the code. And yes, we're writing TypeScript. Well, it is, I'm just vibing along. It begins the UI using material UI at the moment, but it's likely that it will use Fluent UI eventually. It includes standard libraries for data access to, and the React here, it's written so cleanly that it basically reads like HTML and is easy to follow along. Fast forward a bit, under two minutes, and the app agent didn't even break a sweat. Let's see what it's made. Behold, the equipment admin page, a slick grid listing all equipment records, complete with thumbnails, name, category, and edit delete icons in line. You can search, sort, pay, age and I can easily add categories in line inside this multi-select dropdown. Even add an image to a record without saving it first. Honestly, I'm impressed. Doing this in Canvas apps would take a whole lot longer. Setting up all those galleries, all those patch statements. Let's move on to the cool stuff, the user-facing checkout page. Here's where the user will find, check out, or return items. I fire up a new generative page and go wild with a prompt. Search, filter, display images, and status checkout, return buttons, confirmations, show current checkouts and history. Oh, and asking it to automatically update the equipment status when I check in and check out records. I include our tables that we're going to use and I even upload a UI mock-up wireframe. Friends don't let friends use dodgy whiteboard sketches. 
click generate and we're off. It takes a bit longer, of course, but not much. Let's fast forward. Okay, first attempt, mm, not quite right. This is the cool thing. I've invested very little time so far. I've got my prompt, but I can just smash that refresh button and try again. Second attempt, much better. Category fills are pills, beautiful responsive UI, search, checkout buttons, my checkouts and my histories, it's all there. Even image thumbnails in the grid and I didn't even ask for that. Click checkout and it prompts for the due date in the dialogue. But wait, unsupported navigation. Well, I've seen this before and I can just flip over to the code and do a quick search. You can see that it's trying to reload the whole page every time it's finished a checkout. And I can just go and ask it, don't reload, just refresh the UI. And after another page generation, it's fixed it and I can check out and check in records. Now let's just tweak the visuals a little bit. Those cards are a bit tall and images are low res. That's because it's using the base 64 encoded thumbnails. This is a cool feature where I can easily add a screenshot to give the code agent context. And I asked to modernize the status labels. I push my luck and ask it to use the high res images. Just to be on the safe side, I give it the URL format that I just copied and pasted from the learn docs. It follows instructions beautifully and I only had to give a quick reminder to use the right org name and now everything's crisp in those images. Now the thing is, I know how to write React, so couldn't resist asking if it could optimize our React code. And it's suggesting all the right things using memoization, callbacks, but I push my luck too far and the Gen AI didn't quite work. This is the cool thing. You've always got the ability to undo or restore to a previous point. I found that it's better to undo when something goes wrong like this rather than trying to prompt my way out of the error. So I set a display name and selected the icon to use in the model-driven app navigation. I published the page and then I could view it in our model-driven app. And wow, it fits right in. Seamless UI, accessible, reactive, full web API integration. All of this in minutes. Now I pushed the bar even further and created more pages. A drag and drop page for moving equipment between locations and a dashboard of equipment and checkout history over time. We don't need to add them all into a single page. We can just simply create new generative pages for each scenario. And this means that the code is kept to a manageable level. And I couldn't resist adding in a little AI sparkle by creating an AI model inside AI Builder and giving it the code to cool that model. Just awesome to have AI power inside our AI generated page. Sure, I had to guide it a little bit. Generative pages aren't magic. It's not unicorns all the way down, but it really is very close. So what did we learn? Be specific in your prompts, add tables and screenshots. And if it's not right first time, refresh and try again. Use precision prompts for precision tweaks and rollback is your friend. Fun fact, I spent more time editing this video than building the app in the first place. But will it replace Canvas apps, I wonder? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. But as promised, and to prove my point about not always accepting the first attempt, here are all the versions of that classic arcade Asteroids game I got before I stuck with the version I liked. My prompt was exactly the same in each case, and I think it's my best one yet. I highly recommend checking out Generative Pages as soon as it hits your region. And you can learn more in the link in the comments. So next time, I'm gonna be vibe coding in Power Pages. So I hope to see you there. Until then, I'm off to play Asteroids. Cheers.